share a message with us, and then we'll jump into the announcements. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You know, I just think we're very, very blessed this year. You know, some things have happened. We've had some uh, hard times nationally and, and locally, but uh, we're all still together and we're all here. And I'm here to report to you that the uh, finances of the church are in very good shape. Uh, we've got quite a bit of money. A lot of it's due to the uh, PPP that we got and also the uh, new sound system that's going to be unveiled here, I hope, next week is, uh, is paid for. So. We're all in pretty good shape. That's the good news. And the other good news is, you know, that we're very, very blessed to have Joyce Crane and Teresa Poindexter and Penny Sams to help us out. And of course, the minister is doing a doing a fantastic job, and that's one of the reasons the budget is so good. Now, the bad news: we're going to have to go up on our budget about 5.3%. You're going to be getting a letter this week, uh, you know, kind of explaining that. You're going to have a sheet of paper that explains our finances. If you got any questions, you can give me a call. I'm not going to take a lot of time here this morning, but we're going up about 5.3%, uh, and that's due to a little bit of everything. The uh, minister's salary goes up, the church uh, maintenance is going up, and so also the, some things that the parsons are going up. So it's very, very minimal. Uh, we're not at 125,000. That's the good news. And uh, but if you got any questions, you're going to get a letter about uh, your tithes. And if you get right, everybody's been very, very faithful this year. That's another thing we are glad for. <laughs> glad for the people that support this institution. So thank you very much. I look forward to talking to you later. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. <coughs> Um, I mentioned before that youth are going to be doing encore buckets this year. And there are envelopes down here if you wish to um, contribute. We're also going out to businesses and asking for donations of the different supplies we need to do that. And then the youth are going to uh, pick up the supplies, get the buckets, do all the packing. Uh, so if you would like to contribute, that's a way to do it. Another way you can do it, especially if you're online, if you go to our online giving where it says to, Right now, if you default to general fund, if you click on that, it'll go down to, you can select encore un buckets, and then that money will go to what we're doing here with the youth group. Also, youth group kickoff is gonna be in two weeks. We'll be doing social distancing, we'll be wearing masks when we're indoors, and for those youth who are ready for confirmation, I'm gonna say that again, some, per some parents' ears will be perking up. If your youth is ready for confirmation, if they're in middle school or high school and you think they're mature enough to go through confirmation, we're going to be doing it via youth group. So they need to start coming to youth group so they can kind of get the feel for what we're doing and how we're going to do that. The confirmation will occur on Sunday evenings in youth group. So we're kicking off October 25th at 6 o'clock. Also, one of our youth, Nevaeh Easton, you guys haven't to see her lately, because most of our kids have not been coming. The parents have been trying to keep them in limited um, exposure. So she is raising money to attend the New York City trip that's going to be happening at Benjamin Rush Middle School. She's earning the money. She's coming to my house this um, afternoon to help winterize my garden and get everything ready. So if you have some chores you need done around the house, maybe your baseboards need cleaning because, you know, smaller and younger hands can get down those baseboards better than us. Or if there's something else you would like to have done at your house that you would like to hire her to do, get a hold of Tisha. And then that way, Nabea can keep earning her money for this trip to New York City. She's really excited about it. Also, um, Penny's going to get this in the bulletin. We talked about the last council meeting that we need to get serious about making disciples, not just passively hang around and hope it just happens. You don't just open the door and, and reach people. So we want at least 15 people from this church to attend a workshop in July. I cannot stress enough how badly we need 15 people to go to this workshop. It's going to be a game changer for us. 
And if you love this community, if you love this church, and you want to see something change, sign up. Okay? I ask you to do that. Uh, so at this time, I don't think I have any other announcements. Anybody have anything else? Turkey Summer tickets, see Penny. Okay, you want to vote? Actually, just go see Penny and get your Turkey Supper, Supper tickets if you're going to sell. There we go, right? I, I think I've got everybody here. Excellent. Oh. And so if you're not here and you're going to sell Turkey Supper tickets, get a hold of Penny and you guys will work out how you can get them, okay? So now at this time, let's settle down. Let's quiet our minds, close our eyes. Just really get ourselves prepared for worship during the prayer meeting.
Heavenly Father, it is good to be here in this place to worship with you this morning, to praise you, to thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And Father, you keep your promises. And you have said that if your people would pray together, that you would heal this land. And Father, I ask this this morning, that, that we will come together, and this will be our prayer this morning, to heal our land. We love you. We need you. And Father, I would ask that you touch the hearts of all that are here and otherwise, to pray not just on Sunday morning, but to pray often and daily, and to develop that great relationship, that personal relationship that's possible with you. These things we ask in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, as you're able, remain standing for Shine, Jesus Shine, one of my favorites. All right, Scott. You forgot to look at something. I don't know. Are you ready?
concerns. For those of you who are online, don't forget if you want to be have something added to the prayer list, just go to our website, millwayumc.org, and you'll see a place where you can do prayer requests. Fill out the prayer, the prayer request, it'll get to me, so I can start praying right away, and it'll also go to Penny, so Penny can get it on the prayer list. And if it's confidential, just note that in the prayer, the first where you know what the prayer is about, that it's confidential, and then we won't put it on the prayer list, and I'll still pray for you. So at this time, do we have any joys, concerns, or glory sightings that you wish to share? Yes, Betsy! Yes, uh... We can hear you. Oh. Uh, my sister, honey, that you know has been going through all this turmoil for the last year or so. When her husband died of cancer, she lost her house because of the bills and stuff. So um, two weeks ago, I flew to New York State um, for her husband's uh, memorial service and for the burial at the top of New York. And a few days before she came up, her house sold to a cash buyer. So now she's completely out of debt and she can move forward with her life. And she got two major things done, and I'm just so happy for her that uh, things are working out for her finally. And this is Honey, right? Honey, yes. So we want to continue to pray for Honey. But, you know, we, we know that Honey lost her husband not that long ago. And um, it was really a financial hit also to Honey. Not only losing her husband, but financially that was a struggle. And so her house is finally sold, so she's excited that she paid off all her debt and move on with her life. So we want to celebrate that, but also continue to keep honey in our prayers. Anyone else? Jimmy! I, I guess I have a joy. I'd like to send blessings to the Andersonville uh, Township Volunteer Fire Department. Last night they donated uh, five fish sandwiches and five tenderloins to the APA meeting last night. I just, I just thought that was really nice. They and Heather walked the sandwiches over to us. And so... And that is, I, I still just think that's just a marvelous thing that, um, for those of you who couldn't hear it real well, is that um, we have AKA Saturday nights, starting around 5, <coughs> well, we start about 5.30, but we start gathering around 5, and the uh, fire department donated food to that group. So I thought that was pretty cool that that group um, did that. They're here raising money, they turn around and they give something to the AKA group, which is wonderful. Teresa, I can add something to that. I went over yesterday to get ours, I drive up, and uh, I forget his name, the wrong boy. Dave. He came up to the window and he said, because uh, I helped him, I said, yes, I'd like one steak and one fried fish. I mean, shrimp. One fried shrimp. He looked at me kind of funny and he started laughing. <laughs> I said, I know, you don't have those. <laughs> and so what else we're adding to the prayer list is Logan Bachover. And that is my neighbor's friends at the at a child at Riley. Um, he got to come home. Oh, he got to come home? Yes, he got to come home. Um, they have not gotten definite answers yet, but they do believe he got Lyme disease from his head. He is on a heart monitor for the next 30 days. Okay, so we want to keep Logan in our prayers because he was in Riley because they're trying to figure it out and they think he may have Lyme disease. Yes. Yes, that time of the year when those things happen. Yes, uh, his mom and grandma were both messaging me asking me what he had a lot of symptoms that we had in Brooklyn. Yeah. That was scary. Yes. That was a scary time. Anyone else have any joys, concerns, glory sightings they want to share? Okay. Well, you know what? Let's go to the Lord. <coughs> Mother in God, you never abandon your children. Your steadfast love endures forever, even when we least deserve it. Your faithfulness has continued through generations, Lord. And we pray for all of those in the world whose trust has been broken. Maybe they've been exploited by people in power or abused in their intimate circles. Lord, we lift those people up today. Lord, we pray for those whose trust has been broken because they've been abandoned by those who promised to stay or manipulated by those who refused to let go. We lift them up to you today. We pray for those whose trust has been broken through cold comfort in times of affliction 
or callous rebukes on those that are in the margins. We pray for those whose trust has been broken through the trauma of war or the chaos of assault or by lies that have been shared. Lord, we come today lifting all the people on our prayer list, including Honey, our volunteer fire department, Logan, and all the others on our prayer list. We lift them up with all of our heart. We lift up those who are on our heart that we lift up silently now. And Lord, we lift up all who yearn for you today. Empower us, your body, to enfold and protect those broken in body, those broken in mind, those broken in spirit, through your all-embracing grace. And now, as the children of God, let us pray the prayer your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now at this time, if you haven't already done so, we've got the um, tithe and offering plates in different places in the sanctuary over here and over there. Go ahead and put those in place now. If you mailed it, we'll be blessing those at this time also. If you've done it online, on our website, you go to online giving and do it there. Um, we will also be blessing those at this time also. So let us confidently offer ourselves to God knowing that God has already provided all that we ever could possibly need. Would the usher please come forward?
Jessica, you want to come up to the children's moment? Well, you can choose your own mic, too. Now that we've got the new sound system in, we've got all sorts of extra mics. We're in good shape again. Here you go, Abby. You get your own mic. Want to just have a seat here? We'll sit by this chicken. Well, I'll get the scores. Sure. Otherwise, I'm going to be involved all over the place, and Ray will sit back there and laugh so hard and shake the video. <laughs> a sewing basket, and they sure wouldn't worship a golden calf. 
Lord, help us to find the golden calves in our lives also. In Jesus' name, we humbly pray. Amen. Thank you, lady. Appreciate it. It's good to see you. I'm not to trip over the board. Uh, yeah, I'm trying not to trip over the board either. Because once again, I don't want to be that kind of last time. Ah! <coughs> I got to back up the steps. My knees are next after Greg. There is a Bible up there, right here on the top. You can use that one, you can use this one. Yeah, there you go, ma'am. You were so welcome. Excuse me for a minute until I get this looked up. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty doings of the Lord or declare all his praise? Happy are those who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Help me when you deliver them that I may see the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory in your heritage. Both we and our ancestors have sinned. We have committed inequity. We have had done wickedly. Our ancestors, when they were in Egypt, did not consider your wonderful works. They did not remember the abundance of your steadfast love, but rebelled against the Most High at the Red Sea. Yet he saved him for his name's sake, so that he might make known his mighty power. And our second one is Exodus. As soon as I find it. always like to have this done before I get up here, but I didn't know for sure where the Bible was. So this 32. Okay. And it is one through six, 32, 1 through 6. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come make gods for us who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to rest. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Carolyn. Spirit of the living God, correct? Yes. Yes. Join with us.
heard of. Kind of finish the sentence for me. Absence makes the heart wonder. In our scripture today, we find absence does not make the heart grow fonder, do we? Sometimes absence makes the heart grow impatient. And when someone else gives us an answer we prefer, we go running after that answer instead because we're tired of waiting. But fortunately, our God is a merciful God. And often we're given grace. And remember, what is grace? Does everybody remember what grace is? Unmerited favor. Okay, so grace. God will often give us grace even when we don't deserve it. And for us, we're fortunate because grace often has the last word. But before I continue, I, I want to tell you something about Greg. And actually, it's a little bit about me too. But uh, you may not know this. You may be surprised to hear this. I hate to shop. A lot of women like to shop. My sisters love to shop. They go shopping together all the time. They'll call me up. They don't call me anymore. They used to call me up and say, hey, we're going to go up to Indianapolis to look for something. Do you want to go? No, I'm in Vegas. Well, we're, we're going to go do this. You want to go? No. I really don't like to shop. Even grocery shopping is a challenge. I've got a list, and if it's a long list, before I get to the dairy aisle, we may not be getting milk because I am done shopping. I'm done. Um, the only time I will shop is the day after Thanksgiving, which I know sounds absurd, doesn't it? That it's a family tradition that the sisters all go the day after Thanksgiving shopping. So they shop a lot longer than I do, but we do shop. Well, you know, Greg's the same way. He hates shopping, unless it's for camera equipment and you can leave him in Roberts all day long. He hates shopping. And there's a funny thing about Greg. And it's a, real, it's a real comedy for us, because we talk about this a lot. We will be somewhere, waiting in line, and it really chafes him. He hates to wait in line. So Greg is famous for going to the jewelry counter. If you're a JC kid and you're buying jeans, and if I'm standing in line with the jeans, next thing I know he's going to disappear, and I know where he's at. And he'll go, come on, jewelry counter's free. Come on, let's go to jewelry counter. We've done this at Kohl's. We've done this at Target. Sam's Club. Sam's Club. He uses the photo booth. He goes to the photo folks and they'll go, hey, we've got some items over here. Would you check this out? And if they say yes, they don't go, oh, here, Jesus. Over here. At Sam's Club. Okay, so we run over there. So we've always laughed about how impatient we are. We are impatient, waiting in line, especially Greg. Anywhere we go, Something will happen, he'll go, I wonder if there's a jewelry counter here. We could be waiting, if we had been waiting in line, we just didn't have to wait in line yesterday when we got our food at the fire department. If we had waited in line, he'd be looking for a jewelry counter of some sort to come through that line. <laughs> Hates the wait. Just, just something that's about Greg. And it's really funny because we laugh, but you know, he doesn't want to wait. Why does he want to wait? Because he has something else he wants to do. He wants to keep moving. Standing in line seems like a waste of time. So we, I think several of us can relate to that sometimes. So Mary here has talked about, I wonder if there's a jewelry counter. Now you know what we're talking about. We're looking for a way to get moving beyond that. You know, in, in, in our scripture today, we learned early on that the problem is impatience. And this is why we need to know this. Because when we read the first part of the scripture, we often forget it by the time we get to the bottom. It starts out, when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, here's the key piece, come, make gods for us who shall go before us. That's why we want it. We want gods to go before us. Remember, Moses wasn't a god, right? Moses would lead them. But also, God would go in front of Moses. Remember? It would be a, a, a cloud in front of Moses or a pillar of fire. It would always go before so they're saying, okay, Moses and God is up there on that mountain, and we don't know that. We don't know if God's consumed him by fire. We've never seen a lot of fire up there. They didn't know what had happened. So we, we need someone to lead us so we can keep going. Now, I've got to ask, where in the world were they going to go then? Because God had given them a promised land, and they didn't even know where it was. Where were they going to go? This golden calf going to start galloping down the road? I don't know about you, this golden calf thing 
always just makes me giggle. A bunch of melted earrings are nothing anything I want to follow. Like I'm not going to follow a sewing basket either. But we learn that their problem is they're impatient. But we also want to kind of understand where are they, okay? Several chapters ago, they have learned the Ten Commandments. What's the first commandment of the Ten Commandments? You guys remember? Thou shalt have no other God before me. Right? They had just learned the Ten Commandments. Several chapters before, they had learned the Ten Commandments. In between, God is telling Moses how to build a tabernacle, how the priest was supposed to do things, so all this stuff. So they've got all these building instructions. Okay, Moses goes up the mountain to give two tablets. Are they starting building? No. They're waiting. I don't know about you, this is what I picture. I picture a little toddler having a fit, popping the face down, going, Are we gonna go yet? When are we gonna go? That's what I keep picturing. That they're just so frustrated, they're ready to go. So we kind of remember that's where they are. Moses was that human figure that led the way, and God went before them. Now, our 21st century minds, when we, re when we say they're replacing God with a golden calf, we just consider that absurd. Still to this day, I consider it absurd, but we have to remember, in that time period, that is something they had seen others do. So they were saying, well, since we can't seem to find our God, and since we can't seem to find Moses, maybe we have to replace it with something we've seen other people do. But you know, sometimes we get just as bad sometimes, don't we? When we don't like the answer God gives, we get tired of waiting. And we see someone that gives us a different answer that we kind of like over at the jewelry counter. So we run for that answer, don't we? And then when someone really heads that way, everybody else starts to follow them. And a great example is COVID. I don't know about you, but there's times when I sit there and watch what's happening with COVID, and I feel it's a test of our patience. It's just a test of our patience. How many times have we gotten this wrong? How many times have we ran after that golden calf because we like that answer better? We were told to wear masks. The golden calf says, you don't need to wear a mask, and we all run to the golden calf. Then someone gets sick, dies, and suddenly everybody wants to wear masks. We're told to social distance to prevent the spread, but then we're allowed to go to a football game and a baseball game, and everybody crowds together in the stands like normal, shoulder to shoulder. Once again, we like that golden calf's answer better, so we run to the calf because we want normal. So normal is now become a golden calf. And it's just not just COVID. Sometimes we get tired of praying, and we don't get the answer we want, and that golden calf looks a little bit more enticing because the answer it's going to give us is something we want to hear. Abraham and Sarah were guilty of this. Remember how God promised them offspring and they waited and they waited and they waited? Lord, when are we going to get some offspring? I mean, they waited and waited and waited. So finally they got Hagar. That didn't work out real well, did it? You know, there's a long list of golden calves in our lives that we've sometimes inadvertently started to follow and sometimes had no clue. But it doesn't take much thought to see how ridiculous it is, especially when we know it's a lie. But yet it's what we wanted to hear. It's easy to follow it. We want it so badly that that answer, we want it to be true. We want it to be what we want it to be. And so... We'll try to say, well, you know, maybe this is what I should do. You know, no golden calf led the people out of Egypt. No golden calf is going to lead us out of the pandemic. And no golden calf is going to lead us through life. So I think we should somewhat put ourselves at the foot of Mount Sinai. And we picture what it was like for those people to just sit there and wait. And we can imagine, no matter how absurd it was, if the people there were waiting for Moses and God, that they would make a figure out of earrings, melted earrings. Because they thought, well, if we get something else, we can move on. They wanted to move on. They were looking for their jewelry counter. And you know what's amazing? 
building has still exist today. I've really sat and pondered that this week. Thinking about the golden calves that we have now, the golden calves that I've allowed to be in my life. Even though we know they're lying to us, we hear the words, we hear those lies, and we still want to follow. We still give them praise because we like their answers better than what the answer we may have got from God or maybe the answer we haven't got from God. We have golden calves that clearly like to oppress those who are hurt, who are less fortunate. And we still give them praise because, well, financially it's not such a bad thing for me. So it's okay, I'll go ahead and praise that golden calf. Sometimes we have golden calves that entice us, entice us away from being the hands and feet of Christ because, you know, that means you have to go out of my comfort zone. It means I'm going to have to grow. You always grow in your outside of your comfort zone. You realize that? No one grows inside of your comfort zone. You only grow outside your comfort zone. But we like that answer better sometimes. But back to Mount Sinai. They violated the first commandment, and God didn't respond well. You didn't get to read the rest of it. You want to go home and read the rest of Exodus 32. Got to read the rest of the story because Moses starts interceding on the people's behalf because God said, I'm over this. I'm done. I'm killing them all. I'm keeping you. I'll start another nation through you. And he's like, no, I don't want that. If you're going to kill all of them, take me too. But then Moses intercedes, but said, your reputation, you got them out of Egypt. If you go kill them now, Egypt's going to turn around and say, well, you know, that God just kills its people when they don't do something. Do you really want that? He appeals to his reasonableness. Do you really want to do this? I mean, look at this. You know, when you're sending them to the promised land, and then he says, your promises, remember your promises to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. Remember your promises? You promised. I'll let you read the rest, but you know, he grinds up that calf and they have to drink it in water. Boy, doesn't that feel good. But they didn't die from God killing them. He did intercede on their behalf. You know, and Moses intercedes, but also in Jesus' time. We saw examples when Jesus would intercede. Remember the woman that committed adultery? And the law was really clear here. The law said if you commit adultery, the man and the woman are to be taken forward and to be stoned. Well, first of all, it was only the woman. But Jesus interceded. The law was really clear. He was like, what are we doing here? We have grace. Why are we doing this? We have grace. And he allowed grace to get the last word for her. You know what the great thing is about the scripture? Even though when you read it, you kind of go, oh, a golden calf and the fact that they're going to grind it up and make, make people drink it. That's not the message I want us to hear as much today. The message I want to hear us all to hear today is it doesn't matter. If you come back and you repent of what you've done, grace will always get the last word. Even if you do something stupid like following a sewing basket as a god or a golden calf as a god or money as a god, or technology. What about that, Jessica? Technology. If you treat something else more important than God, but you come back and say, Lord, I've screwed up. What happens? Grace is the last word. So it doesn't matter what you may have done. All of us have probably got something in our past we're not going to thrill about. Grace always gets the last word. And you know, Jesus still intercedes for us today, just like Moses interceded that day. All we have to do is ask for Jesus to intercede for us. As a matter of fact, every Sunday, we have a prayer of intercession. After our joys and concerns, you guys ever notice that? That's what that is, is a prayer of intercession. We are praying to Jesus, saying, Lord, these are the things we are lifting up. Would you please intercede on our behalf? We still can do that. God will even forgive our foolishness when we follow a golden calf. Because our God is still a merciful God. 
Hallelujah. Can you say that with me? Our God is a merciful God. Hallelujah. Go loud. Our God is a merciful God. Hallelujah. Grace still gets that last word, and I am so grateful. Would you pray with me? Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in praise. I don't think anyone here can probably say they have ever created a golden calf out of their earrings and followed it. So we haven't done something quite as absurd, but I'm sure there's other things we have done, Lord, and we are sorry. When we discover those, when we are sorry, when we follow people who lie to us, we are sorry, Lord. When we let people lead us to do things we shouldn't be doing that take away our integrity, we are sorry, Lord. We ask for forgiveness. We ask you to pour your grace out upon us. We know we don't deserve it. We know we can't earn it. But we come to you, Lord. Help us to see the golden calves in our lives so we can come to you and ask for an intercession. That you will intercede for us just as Moses interceded for the people. In Jesus' name, we humbly pray. Amen. Our final prayer is, God be with you. Ooh, I like that. Please stay.